right. grooming out there. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Toxic Masculinity. Ladies and gentlemen, we had some massive technical difficulties. It took us <laughs> over an hour <clears throat> to get on the, uh, on the air here, broadcasting live for you all. But we have finally done it. Let me know if there's anything wrong with the audio. Just uh, throw a comment out there. Now, if anyone does throw in a super chat or anything like that, uh, we will read those in uh, toward the end of the show. Um, although this is going to be a shorter episode because we started an hour late. Uh, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, th this ends up working out reasonably well, uh, this whole thing. Five times five audio, five out of five, I think that means. So thank you. Okay, great. Good so far. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I need to introduce you to a couple of people because you might see two faces here, uh, handsome, delightful faces that, uh, that you don't recognize. <laughs> well, listen, what is this show going to be? Let me tell you what the show is going to be first before I introduce them because I want to explain why they're here. I wanted to do this show for a very long time. The concept behind this show, Salty Nerd, Salty Nerds in the house. Hey, guys, how you doing? We're going to have to have you guys on this show because we're going to be doing this every Monday and every Thursday from here on out at 7 p.m. Yes, 7 p.m., not 8 p.m., 7 p.m. <laughs> so listen, our goal for this show, our goal is to be funny, fun, entertaining, <clears throat> have a little bit of, you know, just like a repartee between the three of us, something that's a bit fun. And you need people who are, one, charismatic, and two, they have a kind of ability to communicate with each other that seems natural. This guy to my left here, this is my good friend, Kurt Franklin, out in Hawaii. Hello. The guy below me... <clears throat> This is Jason Labrada out in Miami. Kurt, yeah. how long have you known each other, my friend? <clears throat> oh, well over 15 years at this point. Well yeah. over 15 long years. Time. Jason, how long have we known each other? <sighs> uh, since back in the college days. Um, <laughs> what, 2001, 2000? No, no, 1998, my friend. Wow. We know each other wow. for 26 <laughs> years. 20 <laughs> So, so these guys, these are gentlemen. Okay, the, and here's the thing: they're not just they're not just dashingly handsome. They're not just strong <laughs> patriots and intelligent guys who can analyze politics as well as anyone. But they they're also good men, and I think that that's the important thing. If you want to do a show with three men talking about political issues, having a laugh together, you got to have that camaraderie. Camaraderie. That nice repar, uh, you know, repertoire, repertoire. No, that's not the word. I said the right word earlier, but now I forgot what it was. <laughs> anyway, you need to be able to communicate well, but you also, I think, you need good people so that you know, so that you're getting a, a positive message across. Anyway, so this is my good Thank friend. Thank you for <clears throat> I'm, I'm glad you think of me that way. <laughs> <laughs> Either that, or I'm just lying to the audience. My good friend, Kirk Franklin, my good friend Jason Labrada. Uh, so everybody give them a little bit of love in the comment section. And what we're going to do every episode is we're going to break down two news stories of the day, maybe three or four, depending on how big the news day is. We're going to talk a little tiny bit about pop culture, one pop culture thing. And then at the end, we're going to talk about some kind of, if we have time, some kind of philosophical issue, something that we've just been thinking about, maybe not related to politics, maybe related to politics. And then we'll get to the questions, we'll get to the super chats, and we'll answer your questions, and we'll just address you guys. So, uh, Kurt, do you want to say anything to the audience? <laughs> no, I don't have any, any statement prepared, but uh, yeah, it's nice to be here. Uh, I will uh, loosen up and try to speak my mind freely and keep, the, uh, keep it PG, but uh, say some inappropriate things without any foul language. That's my goal for the day, and I think I can achieve that. Yeah, no, no. Be as vulgar as you want. Just, just uh, use euphemisms. Yeah, nobody, nobody needs that. Oh yeah, I guess. I'm not that creative, Chris. <laughs> Jay, Jason, you've had a moment to prepare since I asked Kurt first. So, uh, do you have anything that you want to say to the audience? Well, this is my first time ever doing something like this, and um, I spoke to Chris earlier, 
And I said, um, you know what? Uh, I'm going to do this, but um, that's it for my career. <laughs> I'm going <gonna> be, <laughs> to be known as a, as a, as a, as a right wing conservative, uh, um, you know, the usual. It's, it's sad oh. how we live in, in America today. If you're outed as a right wing conservative, there are certain people, there are certain industries where you can never work. You know, it's ridiculous. But, you know, because yeah, sure like you, Chris, like, like, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 I, no you go. Because like you, Chris, uh, you know, I was into the film thing, too, you know, and I'm always trying to keep silent uh, about any right. conservative subjects or. Uh, you know, now I'm just, I don't care anymore. You know, uh, like we spoke, we, I think we, we spoke on the phone about um, that you just got to stand up sometimes and just do what's right. So that's absolutely right. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate that you're willing to do the show. You know, it's, it's, it's very brave. It's very bold of people these days. It's really silly that it has to be that way. It shouldn't be. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that there are certain industries you can't work in if, but, you know, it is what it is. But I've assured Jason that no leftist has ever watched Mr. Reagan. <laughs> YouTube so, so suppresses my channel. Uh, there was one time, I'm not going to get into the details of it, but there's one time when my ex was working in Hollywood on a major film. And the, the first AD, because um, she was friends with everybody on set. She worked on this film for a long time. The first AD texts her one day just out of the blue and writes, hello, Mrs. Reagan. <laughs> and she just about has a panic attack. because she's going, <laughs> I'm never going to work in Hollywood again, mm. you know? And, uh, and I, and I, and she, she calls me up and I go, listen, 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 don't worry about it. Don't, don't be so, so upset. If the guy knows about my show, that means he's a conservative. The only one said, or at least fans, a libertarian. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He's there's, there are some secret conservatives in Hollywood. And if he knows about yeah. my show, there's no way he knows about my show if he's a leftist. So mm. just ask him and he'll let you know. So she writes him back. How do you know about that? <laughs> you know? And, and he writes back. He's like, look, not everybody in Hollywood shares the Hollywood view of the world. Right. So I always love that story. It's a kind of a fun story. And then me and the, that first AD, we became kind of uh, pretty good friends. Um, I won't tell you what films he does or TV shows, but big stuff. <clears throat> The, the biggest movies you can his imagine, career you care this guy about. That's has good. worked on it. That's good that you're a good friend to him. Not to, yeah, don't I, worry I, about us. Yeah, I mean, guy. I've talked to him. I've talked to him a couple times. But anyway, all right. So let's get going. Our first order of business is to discuss the news. So we have um, we have a little bit of news here. Let me go ahead and pop this up on the screen. This, is, this, this jumped into my Twitter feed today. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, according to a study... There's a study out that says men look more masculine when they wear makeup. <laughs> look more masculine. And you probably have seen, if you've gone to Nordstrom's in the recent past, you've gone to one of these like uh, department stores with this kind of like bougie, you'll see that, that uh, some of the men there were like foundation and maybe like a little lip gloss. Like a mm -hmm. lot of like otherwise straight men have become a little bit, effeminate lately and been wearing makeup and it's yeah. I, I i must assume that they're gay i must assume that they're gay these guys behind well, the it's counter. a capitalist culture but it's, so it's, the more stuff yeah. they can get people to buy if you can get men to buy women's products and women to buy men's products it's just like putting women into the, into the workforce you can tax them right so the more people mm. that buy unisex products it's like you know corporations make more money i Sorry, guess i mean it's a good explanation i don't know yeah, why that's, i never thought of that yeah I, I could have finished my sentence before you jumped in, but yeah, okay. Weren't quick enough. <laughs> I, I clearly not. But uh, so, <laughs> I like giving Kurt crap in front of. Uh, it's probably not millions of people, but at least twenty. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't worry about interrupting you. You didn't put on makeup for this, so clearly you're not taking it seriously. <laughs> I did put on makeup. I actually <laughs> did. Put on makeup. I I use a little concealer because I had a spot here. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, you look very masculine. So the article was right. No discussion. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pretty funny idea. This idea that uh, that men would look more masculine with makeup. This is obviously not true. But I tweeted this out uh, this morning, and I wrote, um, "Trust the science, guys. Trust the science." Mm -hmm. That was my uh, 
That was my well. Well, in the eighties, they're go, they're going by the eighties because in the eighties, all the rock groups, all the rock bands, they're all wearing makeup, and they were the men, man, you know. <laughs> the glam. So they're bringing that back, I guess. Had, had, had threw the, throw the threw threw that out there, but I honestly I don't think okay. Despite the fact that these eighties rock groups wore makeup. Twisted Sister didn't really look masculine to me. You know, <laughs> Boy George didn't really look masculine to me. I don't know. I don't know. If Agreed. Doctor, if you were a if you were a if you were drawn to maybe wearing a little makeup, what do you think? I thought you were gonna say if you were a man, I was like, wait a minute. If I was drawn to wearing makeup, well, Elvis wore mascara so his eyes looked better on stage back in the fifties. Ah, so. If Elvis That was a popular it, thing uh, in the in like the twenties in like the silent film era. Mm, sure. And then I think it was so, brought back by the goths. Yeah. Maybe, maybe in the silent film was an issue with uh, picture quality. So you could see everything better, the lips, the eyes, because exactly, didn't exactly have right. 4K Because it was such then, right? low resolution. Yeah. yeah. And I think that might even go back to the theater days when, you know, people would be sitting in the back and they'd want to sure. see these people, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, like vaudeville and this sort of thing. But... Uh, Anyway, I've uh, you know when I first started working in Hollywood, they would they make you wear makeup actually because uh, when you go on camera, cameras don't have the same kind of uh, what we would call um, what do they call what do they call it, Jace? You know what I'm talking about the um, the amount of light that you can get from darks to brights. What do they call that? Dynamic range. They don't cameras don't have the same kind of dynamic range that our eyes do. So if you look at somebody, they look a little bit oily or they look a little bit uh, sweaty or something. On camera, it's going to look ridiculous. They're going to look ridiculously sweaty. They're going yeah, to look like ridiculously yeah. <laughs> oily. So you need what they call like powder, right? You need to like powder your – like here and here and like your nose usually. And uh, for a little but while – it's unnoticeable like, on film. It's much more noticeable. Like you get these massive like, – look at Kurt's face right now. Disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> I, I took every precaution to get this, to get this from happening, <laughs> but uh, here he we are. He sweats a lot. Uh, all right, all right. You guys want to, uh, Kurt, uh, Jason, you want to talk about this story? You talked about the 80s. Kurt, you talked about how this is good for uh This article capitalism. seems to be just like one of those things that's just kind of like a, a clickbait type of thing where they're like, oh, you know, we're going to get people engaged in this. Like, like, I'd like to say they know it's ridiculous, but we are talking about, you know, leftists here. So, I mean, hmm. who can really say that with any confidence? But that would be my assumption coming from someone who is not a crazy person, like, okay, well, they can't possibly think this is true. It's absurd. Right. It's not, it's, they're just, they're just, um, cause it's actually de demasculating. They just want to demasculate people. And they're trying to convince men that, you know, it's, it's it masculine when they up when it. Okay. Huh? Well, you think people, so you think they're going to, th that they're intending to convince people with this? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The user yeah. Trump one uh, just wrote one word: sodomites. <laughs> mm. I think that's probably uh, sums it all up. But uh, you know, this is an example. That's, he was of... accusing us of that. <laughs> I certainly hope not. Uh, I think he means. Was there a question uh... mark? Sodomites? Yeah, question <laughs> mark. <laughs> Only on the weekend. Winking. Uh, so face. anyway. So, no, no. I, I think I think this is an example of of how science does get it wrong. You know, this is this is a study uh, that was either obviously very biased, or the they interpreted the results in a certain way, or there was mm -hmm. there's a there's a method that you can get the result you want called p. -hacking. Study was conducted entirely and, in West Hollywood, California. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, some of those I, I have a friend. He's he's my ex's hairdresser. This guy, gay guy on uh, Hollywood, and and he, uh, this guy is one of the most jacked guys I've ever met. Like he's huge. He looks like an ox, right? It's because a lot of these guys now, these gay <laughs> dudes now, they they do tons of steroids. Mm. What what happened to my? What happened to our friend? We seem to have lost someone. All right. Well, hopefully we get him back here in a second. But anyway. Um, yeah, these guys, these gay dudes are now like Jack. They look like, uh, you know, the Incredible Hulk uh, because, you know, gay men, they care about their aesthetic, I think, more than straight men, obviously. And this is a thing now. They, they all look, they all look, uh, well, if you're gay, getting, getting, 
getting stuck with a tiny little needle like that is nothing compared to other stuff we go through. So, I mean, the barrier of entry is very low. And now you understand right, why I I'm had Bert come over. on the show. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While you're back there, then, never mind. We should move Big on. Doug says that the guy in the picture looks like he got beat up. <laughs> Oh. I'm going to have to add Jason back. He's He disappeared for a moment. I don't know what happened. Hey, Jason, what happened? Hey, mic went out. The mic went out. Oh, so you were trying to talk and it wasn't working. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear well, me now, right? Able... Yes. I can yeah, hear you back. now. You sound beautiful. Okay. Any last thoughts about uh, makeup making you look uh, super straight? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just say no, as Nancy Reagan used to say. All right, let's move on to the next story. We've got I mean, next well, sto well, another story. I, yeah, you, go on. Uh, you, Jason, you're married, but uh, Chris and I are still single guys. So if it turns out that uh, that we hit a, enough of a dry spell, then I, I might try something like putting on some makeup. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> if, if it comes to that, if it comes to that, I may uh, move over to the dark side. <laughs> Well, I, I will. Hey, I, I'm, I'm just glad I'm out of that whole uh, relationship situation. Uh, I'm happy to be married and I don't have to wear makeup. Sure. Mm. It's an adventure, <laughs> man. I mean, now you're married, honestly, like let yourself go, huh? Sheesh. <laughs> oh, come on. I mean, come on. That guy has not let himself go. I think, Jason, <laughs> you've just gotten better with age. Let's be honest. Let's be uh, honest. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but you know, it's crazy. You know, it's crazy. Like, you're you're totally right about the dating thing. I, it's really crazy to me how people, how our society tends oh, to. Oh, I, I feel bad for, for for single people. I, I feel yeah. completely bad for single people. Like, um, yes, you should pity us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, especially for uh, men living in the United States, it's it's uh, it's pretty wild. Um, oh. the, the the culture likes to create this illusion. That like dating girls and like sleeping with a bunch of girls is like the coolest <laughs> thing. Like you're the coolest guy. Like if you can get a bunch of girls, you're like the coolest guy, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know. Like all of my fr like, all of my Jewish friends, like the guys who I'm friends with that are Jewish, they're like obsessed with this. I don't know what it is in Jewish culture. If you're a Jewish listener of Mr. Reagan, maybe you can write in the comment section. Let me know. There's this thing with Jewish guys. They're all about like getting laid, right? That's like a big <laughs> thing with Jewish guys. I don't understand that. Like. Um, like if you watch, what was that movie with uh, Stifler? American Pie. Yeah, American Pie, right? Wasn't that kid Jewish? That kid, like, like wasn't that like a? Actually, he's sort of supposed like to be playing, Jewish but script? I think he's Italian. The actor's Italian. But ah, I think he's right, right. But I think Jewish maybe the writers movie. were or something like that. Anyway, you see this so, in a lot in of Hollywood, these Hollywood movies. Oh, and everybody is. Well, <laughs> are you trying to Hollywood movies Hollywood that, that are written by Jewish guys <laughs> often have this kind of like obsession with with the sexual thing. I don't really. It's a weird thing because let I, me tell I think you that Hollywood in general. They have an yeah, obsession probably, with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but let but let me tell you, I, I am essentially <laughs> Batman. Okay. I'm essentially Bruce Wayne. I'm essentially James Bond. Okay. I travel the world. I meet women everywhere I go. And it's it's relatively easy for me to pick up women. And I'm not just picking up like regular girls. I mean, these girls are stunningly beautiful women. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten to the point now, guys, this is this sounds really arrogant. I'm not trying to be arrogant. I'm just trying to present my case here. Like. I'm at this cafe, this cafe that I like out here. Um, I'm <clears> traveling <throat> through Asia at the moment. I'm at this cafe, but like where I am, it's almost all Europeans. So this Russian girl sits down next to me. Right. And I was telling Kurt about this the other day, actually. <laughs> uh, this Russian girl sits down next to me and I literally just. I looked at her. I realized this girl definitely wants to talk to me. Like she's definitely set. Cause there's like a huge empty restaurant, a huge empty cafe. She comes, sits right now next to me. Beautiful girl, beautiful girl. And I literally thought I'm just, I'm just, I just don't have the energy to pick her up right now. <laughs> and I got up and I left, I got up and I left, like I paid the bill and I left. And as I was leaving, she got up from her seat and moved into a shadier spot. And I sat there and I thought to myself, I feel bad. Like, I feel bad for this girl. Like, this girl basically said, I will date you. You just have to talk to me. And I was like, <laughs> no, thanks. And I walked away. But listen, it wasn't because I didn't want to. I wanted to date the girl. She's an attractive girl. But I had just finished my work. I was exhausted. I just was not in the mood to pick up the girl. 
and I'm at an age now, I'm 44 years old. I've, I've gotten kind of like a, an ability to pick up women that allows me to not be like, not have like low self-esteem or low confidence about that. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of just like go about my business and I don't have to prove anything. And, you know, and, and the truth is I did date a few girls when I first got here to Bali and I spent, you know, I spent a bit of money on these girls and I spent quite a bit of time with these girls and they were not girls I really wanted to be with. So I'm just sitting there thinking, is really like going around sleeping with a and bunch of random girls? <laughs> and they're here in the chat today. So Sorry, you guys want to hear the crate? You guys want to hear the craziest <laughs> story? This is the craziest. Okay, we're gonna get to the next news story in one second, but I want to throw this story. No, no, out. this is better. I went to a cafe here. I went to a cafe just down the street. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's fun. It's a funny name because it's it's called Suka which in Indonesian means like love and thank you. It's like a positive word, generic positive word. But mm. in uh, Russian, it means bitch. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so all these people are like, suka, you know, these Russian girls. Anyway, so we go to this cafe and one of the girls that I first dated here uh, in this town where I am, um, like a couple weeks went by and, you know, I had, I had sort of kind of ghosted her. I kind of st stopped writing her. And a couple of weeks went by and I go to this restaurant with my neighbor, uh, this girl that I know, Floor, from, from the Netherlands. So me and Floor go to this cafe and the girl I ghosted is there. She's there at the cafe. So it's like kind of like this really awkward moment. You know, I'm like, I'm like, oh, should we go out the front? Should we like, you know, should we like escape? She's like, no, we're going to go walk out the back. I, want you, to, you I want you to talk to this girl. Mr. Reagan, everyone, the cowardly misogynist. You don't get to see <laughs> on his regular yes. program yes. Where, he's, where he's playing a character. This is Chris Coles, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is me for real. So I'm trying <laughs> to escape this chick. I'm trying to escape this chick. And my neighbor's like, no, we're going to walk past her. So that you have to like face this girl that you just like broke her heart. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, crap. Okay, fine. So I go out the back and I, you know, I pass by this girl and I'm like, Hey, good to see you again. And I just kept walking. She looked up at me like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she was not happy. But here's the really crazy thing. So I start telling Floor about this girl that I dated maybe seven years ago. I don't, I can get into the details of why I, I started talking about this girl, but it's not worth the time. The point is, I just mentioned this girl. Her name's Marina, Russian girl I dated in, in, uh, in Los Angeles like seven years ago. And I also kind of ghosted her after like a week. We go back hey. to Suka. We go back to this cafe Suka like a couple days later. I am not kidding you. I am not kidding you. I turned around at the table we were. I turned around. Marina was sitting there. Marina, the girl I had mentioned that I dated randomly seven years ago in Los Angeles, was here in Asia, in Indonesia. It was like a Hallmark movie. It was the craziest thing <laughs> ever. Was crazy. right? It was so weird. Anyway, I'm like, I'm never going back to the restaurant again. It's like the Twilight Zone in there. It's like, which ex is Chris going to meet next? You know, like, yes. Can you put up? Are you uh, able to put up polls? I'm sure I can, but I, I don't know. I've never to? done I was gonna have. I was going to ask you to do a poll. Is Chris a passport bro? Yes or no? Because passport <laughs> I'm actually about to do right a now. video called, what is a passport bro? I'm going to well, do a video. Called, you don't have to do it now. Bro? We, we got to exhibit it. We can just do a survey. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, all right, let's get on to the next story. I mean, that was quite a good one. But um, speaking of misogynist a-holes, P. Diddy. Oh, uh, my God. So, uh, so, so, here, so here's the story. There. So here's the story about P. Diddy, right? P. Diddy was apparently involved in some kind of human trafficking, potentially, uh, with, like, underage girls and, like, you know, some, like, maybe – drugging girls something like that there's all kinds of rumors flying nobody really knows what's going on but his houses were all raided by the fbi and he seems to abs have absconded to the caribbean um mm -hmm. my theory i believe that there are three possible explanations for what's happened if he really is involved in this kind of like sexual exploitation thing to me it seems <laughs> difficult to keep that stuff quiet um, I mean, maybe you can keep it quiet. Obviously, you can blackmail people, you can extort people, and this sort of thing. But you'd think that law enforcement eventually figured it out. Go. Now they have figured it out. So okay, so there's there's like basically three possibilities. Um, <laughs> Celine Driver says I need to find a nice American girl and stop dating foreigners. 
Well, we'll have to get into that conversation <laughs> another time. <laughs> but anyway, um, Nincompoop says Christ is king. I agree with that. And not Amen. only do I agree with that, I don't really like that this is trending for the reasons that it's trending because it's supposedly anti-Semitic or some nonsense. And I also don't really like talking about Christian stuff on Twitter because to me it's a very sort of like important part of my life and Twitter is trash. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I do, I do obviously agree with the sentiment. I just wanted to throw that out there. Anyway, so this whole P. Diddy thing, I think there's three possibilities. One, he was working with the deep state, who I do believe is involved in this kind of Epstein-esque, you know, sexual exploitation, blackmailing people, this sort of thing. I think we all kind of agree with that. Cool. So maybe he was working with them and they knew he about him and he crossed, huh? And he knew too he much and he crossed the wrong, he, maybe he crossed the wrong person, something like that, and they decided to shut him down. Second thing it's possible, they didn't know about him, they found out about him, and <clears throat> basically they're taking out the competition. Third possibility has nothing to do with the deep state. Deep state's doing their own thing. P. Diddy's doing his own sort of criminal enterprise and just found out the sort of natural way that you would expect the authorities to find out about this, and they just took him down. Normal case of somebody committing a crime and law enforcement doing their job and everything happened as it was supposed to. No funny business behind the scenes. Nothing like oh. that. I don't know which is true, but I'm going to throw it to you guys, Jason, first. Jason, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I think uh, he knows too much because why all of a sudden they're going after him now? Um, so something strange there. Um, yeah. So I just think he knows too much. Uh, it might get people in trouble. Um, yeah. Now, okay. where did he go? He did, we, he went to like uh, Barbados, I think. Actually, yeah, he flew he from like right? California across the United States down past Florida somewhere, right? Like he flew clear across the United States. From the yeah, United but I, I'm, I'm asking sp the specific country. I think it was Barbados. Sure. Did that you sounds hear? right. Did you hear, Jason, where he went? No, I didn't. I think I, I think you know why I'm asking. Too much. Huh? No. You don't know why I'm asking. I'm asking because Jason was a caveman style, captured a wife from the <laughs> Caribbean. <laughs> oh, you think he? it's a uh, Dominican Republic? It says Antigua. Okay, so it wouldn't be Dominican no. Republic. Yeah, no. I was just not sure. But you've been to that region of the world. You're from Florida. Uh -huh. You've been to Dominican Republic, I, I assume. You've never been to Antigua? Never. Never. Okay. All right. They have no extradition laws. So right. that's what I've heard. They have no extradition agreement with America. So if we do commit crimes, gentlemen, <coughs> we're going to Antigua. <laughs> it's good to know for future reference, yeah. <laughs> um, um, all right, so yeah, Kurt, because... what's your what's your take on the P Diddy yeah, P Diddy so you... scandal? I haven't really given it thought uh, until you were giving the options there, but uh, I mean, there's all of this stuff going on since uh, Cat Williams was talking about it. You know, about how like uh, a lot of these people are in this cult, or they sort of like you you play the game and your career advances. You know, kind of like an Illuminati type of situation. Where like you know they'll take the masculine guys or the, or the black guys, whoever, make them wear dresses. They'll do this whole ritual thing where like you know you have to be part of the crowd, and then you know you'll get more movie roles, you'll get more, uh, you'll win you know awards for like album of the year, whatever that whole thing. So I'm thinking like I'm just wondering like how many people Puff Daddy is associated with because they had that R. Kelly thing before, and I didn't see tons of people rushing to defend R. Kelly. Maybe the news was out like I'm. Sh I'm guessing a lot of people knew about it, but they were like, okay, he's been found out. Everybody pretend like you never been to his house, don't know anything about this sort of situation. And apparently, like, I'm not making any accusations, but apparently, like, uh, Oprah is a groomer. She was, like, you know, helping Weinstein find people and stuff. And, like, uh, Rita Ora, she was, like, trying to, like, get her to, like, cozy up next to Weinstein, all this kind of thing. So if you have, if you have, like, black celebrities that are, 
that are part of this thing, I think it might be in the same kind of cases like with Hollywood where they have a quota. Like, okay, we've got Oprah, we've got like, we've got like Kevin Hart, we've got whoever, you know, like I'm not saying Kevin Hart specifically, but there's rumors. So we've got mm-hmm. X amount of people. We don't need a Puff Daddy. So I, I'm sure that this kind of thing exists where is, is Puff Daddy part of that bigger group? Or is there maybe like a separate group, like a smaller group where it's like him and some other people who are their own sort of like conglomerate of, uh, of deviants and weirdos. But uh, yeah, the fact that he fled says to me, he's not part of the big group. He doesn't have those big mm-hmm. contacts where he could be like, oh yeah, come get me. You know what? I'm going to get off mm-hmm. because these guys that are juiced in the term I like to use, like you have these mafia guys or whatever that turn state's evidence. And there's like, oh yeah, like, uh, they're an informant, you know? So, oh yeah, like they, they basically keep running their criminal enterprise, but they just point at this guy, point at that guy occasionally. And then those guys go down. It's business as usual for the cops and for the crooks. Bus- business carries right. on. It's just the guys that aren't part of the in crowd that end up going down for things. So I'm mm-hmm. guessing that Puff Daddy is not part of the in crowd because he's scared. He, he took, he, he grabbed up his stuff. He got out of Dodge. So there's nobody that he's calling going like, oh, you know, like, get me out of this or, you know, I'm not going to be happy. And if I'm not happy, you're not happy. He can't make that call, which is why he ran. That's what I'm thinking. Right. 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 Yeah. I, I mean, P Diddy is such a weird guy. Like it was Puff Daddy back in the day. Right. And then there was some kind of contractual problem and he had to become P Diddy. Oh, was that which one? I always thought was. Yeah, I think so. It's <laughs> sort of like, you know, you, you lose the, the right to your <clears throat> stage name. I think when you right, sign right. contracts with certain, I didn't realize it was like a print. The thing, the thing is, I, I always thought the name relevant. Puff Daddy was stupid to begin with. Yeah. Pr- mm-hmm. Prince had this sort of for artist formerly known as Prince. Um, same, same situation. But then P. Diddy was even stupider. I was like, what a dumb name. And he's kind of stuck uh, with that for a long time. And he kind he of shorted, he disappeared. Shorted did, just Diddy at one point. He got rid of the P. So. Right. Well, he's he he sort of like disappeared off the face of the planet. By the way, by the way, gentlemen, we have 135 people uh, watching our show currently. Which oh. is the single lowest number of people I've ever had watch a live stream. <laughs> So, okay, well. I, I, I blame. Think blame. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't have, couldn't have been we there an hour late. Couldn't have possibly been that. Yeah, no. we were an Must hour have been late getting the show going. Kimberly Ashcraft, thank you. I love you back. Kisses and everything. Um, David Smith says, if you go to Antigua, I suggest the west side of the island. There's a nice little bar named Coconuts, and a good hotel attached to it. It's right on the beach. Okay, well we'll go to Coconuts if we ever. If we ever um, commit horrible crimes uh, of sexual exploitation, gentlemen, we will go to Coconuts at, uh, in Antigua, apparently. Well, we should, go, we should go. go first for a dry run. I mean, you don't want to go there the first time when you're fleeing the law. That's the extra stress. I'm, you sure, I'm sure Diddy has been there many times. In fact, that's probably where he gets a lot of the, the women that he's prostituting out. Um, all right. If you want to show a little love to these gentlemen, send a super chat. We will read that at the end of the show. Uh, but... but uh, I'm satisfied that we have covered this story sufficiently. Uh, do you guys have anything else to say about it, or do you want to move on? Uh, we can move on. I mean, just another example of how, you know, the the elites and the people in the entertainment industry, the, the place where they get the strongest uh, concentration of leftists, not the best people in the world. I know. Shocking to everybody. Okay. So we have, uh, we have, a, we have a super chat here from... <laughs> A gentleman by the name of Curtis, KD5AYY. Now, normally I would wait till the end of the show to read the Super Chats, but this gentleman just posted $100 <laughs> into the Super Chat, so I can't really... J- Jason's expression was, I think, the best. He just did this. <laughs> uh, he says, hey, Chris, love your videos. Maybe you can use this at Coconuts. <laughs> First round is on Curtis. Thank you, Curtis. First round's on Curtis, gentlemen. Fantastic. I love it. Um, well, all right, depending on what stuff costs out there, maybe the whole night. hundred bucks. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. If, I assume Antigua is a pretty cheap place to get drinks. All right. Um, before we move on to our next subject, I wanted to play a little video for you guys. This is uh, something that I'm quite proud of. It doesn't... It doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's just going to be in the <clears> next <throat> video that's going to be posted tomorrow morning. Um, but it took me oh, a little while to do. Preview for all the fans. 
It's a sneak preview, but it was a little bit of an effects thing that I did. I'm quite proud of it, so I'm going to play it. All right, you ready? This is it's it's obviously it's it's going to be about DEI and diversity hiring. So that's just the prep, but this is a little thing that I did, a bit of fun. The safety of thousands of people every day. Do you want to be responsible for keeping passenger jets in the air and keeping these people from dying? Do you want all of this, but you're afraid you're unqualified? Well, don't be. All we require is that you're black, gay, or a woman. Preferably all three. The more black, gay, and woman you are, the fewer traditional qualifications we require. Oh, I'm I'm so I'm so happy watching my own self. You couldn't even bother um, to change your shirt. I was I wanted to say shirt. <laughs> I like this shirt. I like this shirt. So, Jason, you haven't seen that yet. What do you think? Not bad, right? Not bad. Not bad. I love it. I love right. it. That's just a, that's just like about whatever it is. Seven. I, I love DEI, right? by the way. I hope they keep it going. What? I hope they keep it strong. Why is that? Because my son is half black, half white. That's true. Uh... <laughs> and we'll get to so that. Keep it, at the keep end it of the going. I'm, I'm, he's, he's, I'm, I'm going to raise him to say, look, use, no. use your race. It needs to end now because it's all cyclical. You want to come back around right when he's like ready to capitalize on as an adult. That's right. Not That's now. It doesn't help him now. Yeah. I, I think I'm pretty loud. I think Jason's pretty loud. Kurt, why are you so quiet? Do you sound quiet to you, know. Chase? Yeah, he does. He does. All right. All right. We're going to have to fix up. that for the next show. No, I don't. I think, I think it's your mic volume on the app, I think, is the problem. Oh, bother. Okay. Let me, yeah, well, you'll, you'll have to fix that for the next one or, or just pick it up and make everybody throw up. But anyway, so yeah, we'll read the rest of the Super Chats at the end of the show. So if you want to send us anything, uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, but first, we are going to talk about a show that I think is to some degree bringing back the kind of stuff that we were watching in the 80s. Because I, I want to do a, like a little pop culture thing every episode, not know. too long. Just talk a little bit about pop culture, either stuff we hate or stuff we love that's going on right now, contemporary stuff. And it turns out all three of us have watched a show called Reacher. This show yes. has sort of uh, taken the nation by storm. Everybody seems to love it. I have a couple of problems with the show, which I will explain later. But um, Kurt, you've been watching this. I know, Jason, you've watched most of it already. Um, uh -huh. Kurt, you're, you're almost done with the second season, from what I understand, or at least partway through it. Uh, Kurt, I this, uh, give I us your impressions. Oh, you finished that, the whole thing. Okay, great. So, yeah. Kurt, give us your perception of Reacher, because we haven't actually had this conversation since you finished the show. No, well, I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, it's a great show. Spoil Are away. Like... Spoil away, Kurt. Whatever I did didn't fix anything. I, can't... I sound more quiet to myself, and you sound way louder, so... <laughs> I'm a tech genius, but anyway, uh, I, you, you like the second season better uh, than the first. I quite like the first one. Probably like the first more than the second, actually, although there's a lot to like in the second season with because he's got the team, and I thought the dynamic was better because he had the smart alecky friend, and he had uh, the the woman from the first one, and they had a good dynamic going, and he had the you know had the, the girlfriend and everything in the second season, so. But uh, yeah, it's good. It's you thought the ensemble some... cast made the second season better. I think that's what made it made it good. I'm still not ready to con convince this. I, I, I'm not I actually it's better than the first one. But I actually like him being alone, the lone guy that's just wandering around. Mm. But the yeah, thing I, I love feel about that, um, that concept away in the second season a bit. Yeah. yeah. The thing I love about Reacher though is that um, they actually stuck with the with the actual book, the character. Um, like the character is a intimidating um, person in, in, in the books. So like the, the actor they got was just perfect for that. Um, yeah, he's good. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just, I, I like the first one for that, for the whole, uh, he's a wanderer. He's just trying to find his way or, or not trying to find his way. And he just comes into trouble, you know, and, and um, solves, solves issues. Uh, nice. It's like, it's like, Shows from back in the nineties, um, just yeah, I like that, like the Hulk from back in the eighties. Um, yeah, yeah, the Hulk, yeah. yeah. I, I always, I thought, and, and I love really that there's like, no like, um, which we call it, no, uh, no message. It's just the message. It, it's it's um, it's just a cool, it's just a cool guy helping yeah, people. Yeah, out. and he kicks ass. Mm. It, yeah, it reminds me a lot of it, that. This first season reminded me a lot of the show Renegade. You remember that show? 
Oh yeah, I love. I used to love that show. Except yeah. every episode was a new place. Yeah. Yep. It was episodic. Yep. Yeah. And whereas Reacher is like every season is a new place, it seems. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. The other show that was kind of like Reacher, the, at least season one, was Knight Rider. Knight Rider was like this uh -huh. where you'd go place to place. And, and if you go back far enough, there's a show called Maverick. Maverick was a great one. If you guys haven't seen the show Maverick, I highly recommend finding a way to watch that show because it holds up even today. It's actually not just entertaining in the sense that it's like cool action and fun and stuff. It's funny. It's like genuinely funny. Like even by today's standard, it's a funny show. So I highly recommend Maverick. Season two, I felt was more like the A Team or mm. or Mission Impossible, the old Mission Impossible show, mm. where they get sure. the crew together. Absolutely. You know, dun 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 dun. You know, and there's a mission. You know, they have a mission. They're, they in the second season, they had a mission to find their buddy who went missing. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was. A, I think I think it's a great show. Um, the one thing I don't like about the show, and you guys can tell me what you think, you can tell me if I'm wrong completely, but I have the same problem with Yellowstone. I have the same problem with Yellowstone, which my dad loves the show Yellowstone, but he started to dislike it a little bit because it's gotten a little bit too lefty. Mm. But um, I feel like the writers are writing a show that is about conservatives, quote unquote, or about people that conservatives would like mm -hmm. for a conservative audience. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's actually written by true conservatives. And so they don't get everything right. They get things a little mm -hmm. bit wrong here and there. There's a lot of good stuff on the show. There's stuff that I do. I watch and I go, okay, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. But then there's like always one little thing that I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. Actually, that's, a, mm -hmm. nah, that's not quite right. So the show just feels a little bit off to me. It's like not quite a conservative show. It's like, it's like, it's like, um, it's like playing to a conservative audience. I don't know. Do you guys get that vibe at all or no? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, Yellowstone, I, I love the, like, the first season, the second season. Uh, um, the, the thing about it is, though, for some reason, they, they switched the whole plot. Like, they ended up, like, uh, I forgot the name of the family, but they ended up, like, being, turning into these, like, righteous, good people. And in the first right. season, it was, like, more of a dark. They were more, like, mm. not good. They weren't, you know? Mm, and yeah. and that's what I loved about the first season. Um, yeah. Now it's just like they're good guys, and they're just trying to fight for uh, um, their 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 land and and against the big uh, the Native Americans. They're trying to help the Native yeah. Americans. Yeah. yeah. Oh. When the first one, they were all about like killing anybody that would go against their um, family or their business, you know. And and I thought that was like an interesting thing. And when did Yellowstone tur uh, turn? Was it? How many seasons in before it sort of like wasn't the show that it was? I think towards the end of season two and like season three is when it started getting oh, when it went off. Wow, that. okay. Because I'm just thinking now, now that I'm into Reacher, I'm just like, God, I hope this doesn't happen. Because some years ago, there was this show that uh, uh, Chris knows, uh, Uncle Albert and AJ, was where I watched most all of my television. I'm not a big TV watcher, but when I'm at their house, I'd watch like NCIS LA and uh, some stuff like that. They were watching... Uh, um, Black Lightning. And I was like, I don't want to watch this. This is going to be woke trash. I, I know it. Because it was like UPN or WB or whatever they call that station. Uh, I was like, this is this is definitely going to be woke trash. And it wasn't. It was good. It was really good. And I was watching it. And then like after the first season, it was all about uh, this guy who was a superhero. And he was a dad. And he had a couple of teenage daughters and a wife. And they just made the show. They bait and switched me. They, they changed it to making him like useless and it became all about not only the daughters now have superpowers and now they're the focus of the show, but the wife too. And he's just like still in the show, but he's just sort of like this mopey sack of crap. And he's just like, it's like if they took Batman and made Batman lame and they're just like, now it's the, it's the Robin and Batman did show. I'm just like, in the flash. Just like <laughs> what? What, what, what did you, why did you do this? And I was like, you got, I was so pissed off because they got me. They suckered me in by making it a good show. And then they were right. just like, ha ha, you know, like, yeah, I don't get that. They do that to every show now. Like it's a really good show, and then the second season comes and they just bait and switch it. Yeah. It turns into hey. a soap opera. Everything turns into a soap opera. Okay. Well, well, uh, I, I know I'm gonna read the, the um super chats at the end of the show. I just want to say thank you to Yes Man, thank you to Curtis, thank you to Hoff Power Concrete. Uh, Semper Fide, Crawfish Co., and thank you to Eric Wade. We will get to those 
at the end of the show, though. Um, all right. So uh, you guys, you didn't quite talk so much about you, you for some reason went into Yellowstone and we <laughs> stayed there for a little while. Um, do you want to step back quickly into talking about uh, uh, Reacher? And do, do you guys I think like Reacher. that Reacher? I think I, I really like the main character and uh, I think it's he does a great job portraying the character. And the thing I liked about the second season was they kind of you know me, I'm a big like comedy guy. I don't want everything to be super serious. That's why I like the third Indiana Jones movie the best because it's the funniest. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I like that dynamic of because they knew him and, and he su- they, they kind of like make fun of him for being like a loner mm-hmm. and stuff where you can't really do that with his character without people that he knows. And because these people, the close thing that he has to family, he's sort of obliged to sort of like try to be more sociable, try to sort of like take things in stride. Like he has a more familial dynamic with them. So I really like that change from the first season, second season, but they didn't actually change his character they just sort of made his character more of a point of, you know, taking a little jabs and making fun of him for for being uh, such a, you know, such a strong character that's a, the, the loner thing and the, only has a toothbrush and all that. I like that they played that up right. for comedic effect. I could see people yeah. going the other way and be like, they don't like that, but I like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm the opposite. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not about <laughs> okay. comedy, like, in, in a show like that. But um, right. but you're right, like, bringing that dynamic with his, with his friends and stuff like that, I guess... It kind of um, adds something to it. Hopefully, hopefully they'll go back to like the first one in the third season. For me, that's mm-hmm. that's that's. I what think I it'd be a good think. move to make it to make the next one more like the first season because it, it was a departure and go back to the feel of the first season. They kind of keep it fresh, and uh, as long as they don't uh, make him a supporting character to his long lost yeah, daughter or yeah. something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was afraid they were gonna do it. Yeah, I thought I was afraid they were gonna do it in the second season because I used to always say like, oh. I hope like they don't change anything. It's it's just mm-hmm. stick with that. Stick with what works. What worked in the first season, and just go with, it, with that in the second season. And and I I think they they accomplished that. Should, the the thing that gives me confidence that they're going to be okay about that is that it seems like they're basing each season on a different book by Lee Child. So if they don't stray too much from the source material and they don't let and go of The Witcher, that, with it, yeah, we should be cool thing. if they're just like kind of adapting the book faithfully. It shouldn't be a problem. That's what I love about the show. They're sticking with the book. Yeah. Down to the, the characters and everything. Have you read the books? Huh? Have you read any of the books? I, uh, I, I can't say I read all the, the whole book, but all the books mm-hmm. and the whole entirety, but um, I've read some of it. So yeah. yeah. Well, you don't have to apologize. I haven't read any of that stuff. I saw the time. <laughs> that's my introduction to the character. <laughs> but, yeah, because but, I remember when, 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 the movie, when the Tom Cruise version came out, it was like, the character is nothing like that. The mm. character is not yeah, yeah. at all like Tom Cruise. A lot I of people complained first about movie, that though. at the time. I do like that. But I, I thought Tom, Tom Cruise like did a great movie. job, though. I'm, I'm not knocking him because he did a great job at that character. But it was Tom Cruise. You know, this mm-hmm. this actor actually brought the character from the book to life. Yeah. All right. So we all agree that Reacher is one of the better <clears throat> shows of uh, the current era. Quickly, let's just run through what are our favorite shows of all time. I think I know oh. Kurtz, but I'm not 100% we were not, we were on were not that. prepared uh, properly for this. No, I didn't give you okay. any kind of – just off the yeah. top of your head. Just off I, the I'm top not a person of your head. favorites. I don't have favorites. I just love, like, a lot of things. Um, well, just, just, just – just I'm, I'm a big person. science fiction person. Oh. The thing is, when we were kids, right, the stuff we liked back then may not be – you know, you may look at it now and say, oh, it's for kids – but I think the stuff that you watch as a kid has a much bigger impact on you. So what was, when you were a kid, you think growing up, what had the biggest impact on you? What was your I'm favorite show? What do you think was the best show question ever? Because once I got out of the, I graduated high school in like year 2000. So I went into the working world and I wasn't watching a lot of TV or, or anything like mm-hmm. that. So it's going to be, have to be like when I was in high school and, and previous to that. So when you were in high school or, or, or in, in the eighties or nineties, what would you think was the best show ever in history? Ooh, Buffy the Vampire oh, wow. Slayer is a pretty damn good show. Buffy the Vampire <laughs> Slayer. Good choice, actually. I studied that show because I had so many friends that loved it. I didn't watch it when it was on TV. But that show made me realize that it's that you can have a certain kind of a show that is popular because the viewer, the people watching the show, they want those people on the show to be their friends. Mm. Uh, I think the show Friends was a lot like this. Like some shows, you want to live in that world. You want to live through that story. 
but others are just you want to hang out with those people. And Buffy the Vampire Slayer was one such show. And hopefully this show can become like that for many of the viewers out there. Jason, what was your favorite show? It was the best show of all time. Oh, wow. So I'm a big science fiction person. So I love, um, as far as TV, like I was into like Star Trek, uh, Next Generation, uh, Deep Space Nine is one of my favorite like shows. Um, uh it's crazy science fiction that I, that I really fell in love with like show like far state was one it's just the characters are crazy and it's just this completely crazy world um I, well i never saw far escape but it seems like a cool show oh it's it's awesome i love it like just the whole premise of it just the whole plot is like awesome this guy from earth gets stranded into this weird universe and you know he has to survive in this universe and he actually ends up like um really doing well in it and, and, and it's awesome. It's awesome. Um, but um, I like I like, when I watch stuff, I like to get out of the normal world. I like to watch things that will get me out of this crazy world and take me to another place. Escape is. So, We've talked sure. about that a little bit uh, in video games as well. You like uh -huh. weirder video games. and that. Um, for me, I'm going to throw out there a few things from the 80s that I loved. Obviously, I love MacGyver. Uh, I, I like yeah, I, I like basically anything from the 1980s. I loved it. Same but here. I think the greatest. I think probably the greatest show of all time. And you I guys can tell say. me what you think. I know what you're going to say. I think he knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap. <laughs> the original. Show. The original show. I've not seen the new one, but the original Quantum Leap I think is certainly the best show. I totally uh, ever forgot made. Quantum D E I. You don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of dei speaking of dei we're going to get into the philosophical discussion of the day it's a little bit past the time that we're supposed to continue doing this but we started super late so let's just get into it real quick uh this is a subject that jason wanted to broach um there is this idea in america that certain people are distinguished by their ethnicity where they were born what who their parents were what their quote-unquote race is whatever What's weird here is that, okay, Kurt is, I, I don't want to like, uh, I don't want to like out you here, Kurt, but uh, <laughs> Kurt is uh, half white, half Japanese, Nihon, from the land of uh, the, the Japanese. And uh, Jason here, his parents were from Cuba, which makes him in the eyes of the left, a Latino or a Latinx, as they now say. <laughs> but like, for me... These two guys are two of my best friends in the world that I've ever had in my whole life. And I never really think about Jason being Cuban. I never really think about Kurt being half Japanese, unless I'm calling It doesn't matter where you're time. from, as long as you're culturally white. As long as you're culturally <laughs> right, yeah. Except when I'm telling him to, to not, not to drive so crappy. Uh, I never huh. think about him being an Asian. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in, in, and unless I'm, uh, you know, getting the secondhand smoke off of... Uh, one of uh, Jason's many cigars. I don't think about him being Cuban. Um, yeah. That's a joke. I don't think even well, I, smoke cigars. I don't even know. But um, yeah, no, we don't really even talk about that stuff. Uh, but Jason feels like it's annoying because Jason, Jason has a wife who is quote unquote black and a child who is half black. Okay. So, but the, fun, well, but the crazy thing, it, but, but the, the, the crazy thing is we're all Americans, right? We're all Americans. Yeah. Yeah. We're like kind of the same people, really. Like we're the same guys. We kind of grew up with similar circumstances at the same time of the in the world, you know. And we've got kind of a similar attitude about life and si similar perspective. And, and we're all conservatives, Christian men. And it's like, does the race thing really matter? Because the left makes such a big deal about it. And so I'm going to turn it over to Jason. Jason, tell us what your thoughts are on that. Well, um... So yeah, I, I I grew up with that whole uh, thing with the with the the Cuban thing. It's it's funny because no nobody considers me uh, Latinx or or Latin or anything like that. I mean, I hate it. Uh, I, I consider myself first uh, an American. Like um, I was born well, here. You're Spanish, born essentially. Like genetically, you're Spanish. Yeah. Well, right? gen I mean, genetically, my genes co come from Europe, <clears throat> from Spain. So uh, yeah, so uh, that. It's it's just I, I've always hated that and and whenever you'd have the paper to fill out like what are you like um, white black Hispanic um, and all that stuff it's I never filled that stuff out because it was just it, it's just annoying like um, you know and 
I, I just I'm American, you know. That's that's what it comes down to. I'm American, and yeah. Um, there's a there's a funny thing like um, <laughs> I was on a on a, on a film set. Uh, it was a uh, instinct. We were it was filming filming instinct with Cuba Gooding Jr. and Anthony Hopkins, mm -hmm. and um, I was playing like we were like featured extras. And, and I was like a gangster, like a Mexican gangster. <laughs> and, um, and we were in a group of, group of the extras are hanging out. And, and, and uh, one, like, the, like the Spanish guys there, they were like hanging out with us. And they were telling like the, the, the Anglo guys like, oh, yeah, we're, we're um, look, look at us. We're the, and um, the, one Anglo guy said, um, that dude's not Mexican. He's just playing one for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and um so um yeah i mean you were like the chris it, curtis it, for the day yeah it, 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 it it's it's just stupid it, it annoys me it annoys me my, my wife um she same thing she doesn't consider herself black she considers herself uh american first and, and dominican so uh yeah and um my kid um there's not gonna be any color I mean, he's not gonna be raised with uh knowing any difference uh, do you speak spanish uh, yeah. I, I do, I do. I speak it bad, okay. but I do. I can communicate. I can that. talk. <laughs> speak it bad. <laughs> if, they, if, they, if they question you about it, you just like bust in the Spanish and put them in their place. Just tell them in Spanish, yeah, I'll yeah. touch you. Get them to back off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Your son, your son's gonna grow up an American, and that's the important thing. An American patriot, good man, because uh, he's got a good father, and that's the most important thing. And uh, so Kurt, Kurt grew up in Hawaii, where the white where man I'm coming from right now, yeah. where he is right now, where the white man is a minority, actually. And we're um, we're sort of uh, ridiculed and frowned upon. So uh, <laughs> you you are sort of um, not just the majority. You're sort of like the most common type of person, really, that the what they call uh, like the, ha the what they call you. Hapa Hapa. Howley, right. They, yeah, Hapa. Yeah, they call you Hapa, like Hapa half Hapa white. Specifically, would be half white, but just Hapa is just like uh, a term that's uh, just like slang term for just mixed race. Yeah. So, what are your views on this whole race thing? Well, like you said, uh, obviously, my perspective will be colored by um, my own upbringing, which is kind of an unusual thing to be Asian American. Although I've never used that term to describe myself, and <laughs> to, to be like a half Japanese kid growing up but in hawaii of all places right i think probably more so than any place else in the united states if I, if I can assume so would be like you know easiest to do it here i mean i'm not sure if there's a place where you would go if you were like you know half japanese half white and it's like 90 percent white people i could see you feeling kind of like oh you know like maybe like a little bit not as an outcast but you can you, you know that you're the minority so that could affect your perspective in some ways but I mean, I found in my own experience that it's typically more of a curiosity than sort of a, than a hostility when you find people who mm -hmm. are different. And nowadays, I think it's just becoming less and less and less of an issue because, you know, the, with the social media and everything, it's like people are so aware of each other's cultures now. There's like, I think the stigmatism of, of certain cultures and things is like, really has to be carried on proactively to exist because it's like now you point at somebody else like oh they're like this they're like that well everybody knows somebody that's like that mm. group that they're trying to say is the other you know and obviously i'm talking about the left trying to keep division alive yeah. but um yeah. But yeah in hawaii like like you said it's like my dad is white he's from the mainland that's what we call all of the continental u.s called the mainland my mother is uh from hawaii and her parents came from japan but they were already a couple generations deep in Hawaii, so they're more Hawaiian than Japanese, really. They're culturally they're Hawaiian, Japanese. but they're genetically fully Japanese. Yeah, and I think that, obviously, like, if you're Japanese or you're Chinese or whatever, you, you keep some of that culture no matter where you go. It's not like you're, you go to America and you're just like, okay, I'm, I'm you know, put on a cowboy hat and, and abandon your culture. But the important thing, I think, is that what we want in this country is we want people to adopt the American culture and yeah. not yeah. sort of just... But you're really discriminated like, against by everybody, even Blacks. Who is you half Asian? I'm discriminated. I'm discriminated against by blacks. I thought I thought black people loved Asian people. <laughs> am I wrong? Am I am I am I operating under a misconception? But uh, no, I never really felt that way. I and 
I don't know if people can tell what I am because as a kid, I would, you know, go to California, go to different places, even as an adult. As a young adult, I moved to, uh, to Los Angeles and uh, people would assume they don't, they don't have like half tanned half Japanese people out there. So they just assume I was Mexican. They speak to me in Spanish. So I just have to be like, uh, not, not less than your, you know, so like, what? Like, what? Spanish, Look at that dude. on fire. Like you don't speak Spanish. It's like, what the, what the hell? Like, no, I don't. I just got here. Sorry. But, uh, well, you uh, let me tell folks out there. I don't think this is a little, uh, little exposing of Kurt Franklin here, but, uh, Th- this is no, this man for that. Is, this is only this is all you're getting. Anyway, this man on. is is one of the most uh, viciously racist people I've ever met against <laughs> uh, Asians. <laughs> well, people people don't know this. Asians are the most racist people. Asians but, are I mean, in, in a comedic a sense, in a comedic sense, oh, he'll yeah. just like well, of course. viciously attack <laughs> Asians, and Why it's just it, hours I've of fun the, for I've, me. I've got the I've got the green light. Why wouldn't you I? do have the green light. Yeah, you got to do it. And you know, you know the, you know the, the dirty details of everything Asian. So uh, well, I don't you're, you're that. deeply, in, too much credit, you're deeply but, embedded uh, in the culture. Yeah. Well, like, oh, like I said, it's like I'm, I'm basically culturally, mostly culturally American, uh, but like, yeah, grow, growing up in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Same, same with me. Like, yeah. like, like my parents, um, when they came here, they they made sure they raised us with all the American uh, traditions and beliefs, you know, um, they made sure that we, our language that we spoke was, was, was English, you know, so I grew up not speaking a lick of Spanish. Um, I learned Spanish after I met my wife, her mother-in-law and her, my mother-in-law came to move with us and, and I was forced to speak Spanish. So <laughs> that's when I learned, that's but, but, Ray, born and raised in, 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 in that whole culture of, of, of America, you know, uh, and it was a, it was a, my, my dad had the old belief system of the Americans, you know, you have to serve your country, you have to learn the language, you have right. to be a part of the culture. And I grew up with that. So I, I resent yeah. when people want to like categorize me into, into something, um, you know, that I'm not, I'm, I'm American. That's, nope. that's my culture. That's who I am. And, and and yeah, I, I resent when somebody says, "Oh, you're but you're this, but you're that." No, no. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. the most important thing I think we all will agree is having a good father. If you have a good father, you'll yeah. probably end up being a good yeah. man, whatever your race, yeah. whatever your culture, wherever you're from. So, uh, you know, all the men out there, be good dads. Um, all right, philosophical discussion over. Now we're going to jump into the super chats. What do you What do you think, gentlemen? I'm going to leave Curtis no up there because a hundred dollars. Holy <laughs> crap! This guy wins the super chats for the day. Um, but let me jump so into the starred super chats here. I also want to make a shout out. There's a few people who I know personally who uh, who, who jumped into the super chats here, which is very cool. Christian Watson writes, "Hello, Mr. Reagan and friends." Christian Watson, Christian. At some point, we're probably going to have to have you on toxic masculinity being the uh, scary black man that you are we'll have a full uh, rainbow coalition here chris you don't uh, have to say scary that's redundant right uh, my mistake my mistake uh the next news network the next news network gary franchi good friend of mine writes let's go exclamation point exclamation point uh film is the canvas of dreams another very good friend of mine thank you sir just writes chris exclamation point exclamation point uh, and then the Salty Nerd podcast, of course, longtime <coughs> friend of the Mr. Reagan channel. He writes, this masculinity is so toxic. So those are my buddies who were in the chat. Uh, didn't, yes. None of them sent me money. Oh, reached. Whatever, you oh, cheapskates. What <laughs> I'll read Curtis's again. Curtis KD5AYY writes, hey, Chris, love your videos. Maybe you can use this at Coconut, a reference to an earlier uh, set of jokes about uh, Antigua that we mentioned earlier. Uh, yes, man, threw 20 bucks into the chat, and he writes, uh, has anyone ever been... Okay, sorry. Has any anyone ever been far even... Wait, what? <laughs> Maybe it's for even? For even as decided to use even go want to do look more like. Does anybody <laughs> understand this? <laughs> It's, I, I don't see it on the screen. Sorry. Oh, you don't see it. Okay. Has anyone ever been far even 
as decided to use even go want to do look more like. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I brought it up. <laughs> okay, maybe that's maybe that was a, a text talk to text or something that didn't work out. Okay, well, I'm going to have to skip past that. Thank you for the $20. Sorry, I couldn't understand your text. Um, Hoff Power Concrete Semper Fied Crawfish Co. Two bucks says, this comment identifies as a $100 super chat. Okay, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I think Curtis is going to stay, uh, stay at the top there. Eric Wade, 20 bucks. Thank you so much, Eric. Writes, I've never owned a television. I only watch Mr. Reagan on YouTube Red. <laughs> YouTube Red. Never owned a television. That's impressive. I think he might be lying, but uh, I, I appreciate the... Uh... <laughs> Curtis. What the hell, man? Curtis, Curtis is like uh, our, our wealthiest uh, a super chat uh, person here. I don't know what... He just has $100 bills that he likes to throw out at the... Uh, is this my dad or something that jumped into the chat? It's just being charitable. I don't know. <laughs> Curtis, are you my father? Uh, threw us another hundred bucks. Writes, I think he was at Coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I oh yeah, it came up. Okay. The, uh... do, do you do you understand the text there, Kurt? I do. I think he was at Coconuts. Who was at Coconuts? I missed the uh, joke. I think Sorry. The, I think the yes man who wrote, "Has anyone ever been?" For even as decided to use even go once. Oh, okay. Do, so we had a, had a couple to of those do look drinks more already. like. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, he had a couple feet, of it's fine. Now, Kurt, it, Kurt is one of the funniest guys I know. Uh, and I did suggest if he's a little don't nervous before the show, have a couple of drinks. And he said, I don't think that's a good idea. So the big <laughs> question here, Kurt, did you have a couple of drinks before the show? Yes, but they were both Atkins uh, shakes. So they don't care. <laughs> Atkins shakes. And also, Kurt is 900 years old. We didn't realize. Um, yeah, so all right. Well, I guess that's. Though. <laughs> he doesn't look for a day over 800. All right, gentlemen, do we have anything else to say? I think we're done with the show for today. This was a pretty good inaugural effort. I was intending for it to be a bit, uh, I don't want to say the word crappy, but a little <laughs> bit rough. And the reason I wanted it to be rough is because. You know what? Sometimes instead of thinking something through and making it perfect, you just have to go in and do it, no matter how dirty or rough or imperfect it is. And I just want to talk about the guys, show. I think we achieved that. that. <laughs> we did achieve that. Yeah. I'm talking about the show. Yes. Uh, we could be talking about other things as well, but uh, maybe let's get into that next week. Uh, so this show is going to be, ladies and gentlemen, every Monday and every Thursday, I'm going to do a live stream with these two jokers. Uh, you can see that they've got a good sense about uh, uh, politics, a good sense about culture, and uh, they can be pretty funny. I think they dropped the ball today, but <laughs> Monday uh, they'll be funnier, I promise. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding for all my all right, fans, well, so I don't care if people watch your show or not. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for us. Uh, remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just they know so much that is not sh so. Be sure to watch my video tomorrow, and we will see you again on Monday. Good night.